Now let's go over question number 359, logger rate limiter. Design a logger system that receives a stream of messages along with their timestamps. So we're going to be giving a stream, a flow of messages and their timestamp. So first one being message and second one being timestamp. Two things, each unique message should only be printed at most every 10 seconds. So whatever our message is, it has to have an interval of 10 seconds in order to be printed. So it has to be that same message. So if we were to have a message, I don't know, let's say hi, and our timestamp was one. Well, in order for us to print or log hi again, it has to be 10 seconds after. So that would be at 11 seconds, we can print hi again. Message printed at timestamp T will prevent other identical messages from being printed until T plus 10. So since our T was one here, we add 10 to that and when it's 11, we can print it again. All messages will come in chronological order. Several messages may arrive at the same timestamp, okay? So they're gonna be in chronological order and some may arrive at the same time. So first we have to implement a logger class. Logger initializes the logger object boolean. So we're gonna be getting a true or false value should print message. So this is the method that we have to implement. And that's going to take two things. One is the timestamp and another one is the message. Returns true if the message should be printed. So if we are able to print the message, we're gonna return true. Otherwise, we are going to return false. Now we have our example one. And for the input, just look at this one. This is just saying that for the first one, we're gonna initialize our logger object and then these are going to be our stream of values or flow of our messages and timestamp. And obviously the number represents the timestamp and the message is the string. Now let's go to our explanation. I think that would be easier to see. So the first message is foo with the timestamp of one. Well, since this is the first one, we can actually return it. So we print true because we never printed foo before. And the next one is bar. And since we never printed or logged the bar before, we print it and we have to somehow keep track of this timestamp. So foo is one, bar is two. Now the next message, well timestamp three and foo, well we can't, right? Cause the next message is going to be at plus 10, which is 11 for this one and 12 for this one. We can't print this, so we return false and we check, well, we can't print this one either because the timestamp says eight, but we can print bar again only at timestamp of 12. Next is going to be also false. And next is going to be 11 and we print the foo. Well, it happened to be the case that our test, we are able to print foo again when our timestamp is greater than or equal to 11. So we can print our foo and return true here. So the key idea for this question is to be able to track when we last logged or printed our respective message. So for foo, it was one and for bar, it was two. And later it became 11, right? When we printed the last message, we have to be able to keep track of our time spent so that we can actually print our message in a given interval. If you guys find this helpful, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Thanks. Now let's implement our solution. Our solution is going to have a time complexity of O1 and space of O of n. Now I have my logger class and my method should print message. And for my class, my logger class, I'm actually not going to add anything. I'm going to add stuff as I am running my should print message. So I'm just going to leave it like this and add stuff later. Now down here, I initialize a new instance of my logger object. And you can see that we have our flow of values. So one and foo, two and bar and so on and so forth. And we are just printing our logger class so that later we can see what's in our logger. Now let's go to our method and try to implement our solution. Now, first, we have to be able to handle cases when we actually never printed a message before. Well, if we never printed or logged a message before, what we can do is we can just simply print it, right? So we can just return true. And we have to be able to save our time spent along with the message. So let's try to handle that first. Well, we know that 
we never printed a message if it's not in our logger. So let's check. So if our logger does not have the message that's passed in, so if this is equal to undefined, what we want to do is we want to save it and return true. So how do we save it? Well, we save it by this. We pass in our message and we set it equal to our timestamp. And finally, we just return true. So let's go down and check how that worked. Here, you can see that for the first two flow of values, it's returning true because we actually never printed foo. We never printed bar. And here you can see that we saved foo as our key. So the message is our key and our value is the timestamp one. So we correctly saved foo and bar into our logger. Now our logger is keeping a track of these two messages along with their respective timestamp. And for us to print the next message for foo, it has to be 10 seconds after. So that's going to be 11. For bar, it's going to be 12. So we can see that for these three messages, we have to return false because those three doesn't satisfy our condition. So let's handle this case where it doesn't print because it printed within the set interval. And set interval, if you remember, was 10 seconds, right? Let's handle that. So let's create our else case. So we have to check if our current timestamp is less than our saved timestamp, which is one for full and bar plus 10. So how do we get our saved timestamp? Well, we get it by this. We pass in our message and we just add 10 to that. So if this evaluates to true, we are going to simply return false. And here you can see that we are returning false for all these three values. Now, how does this work? Well, for this one, we are passing in three as our timestamp and our message is foo. Well, what's the timestamp that we saved for foo? Let's go back down and you can see that it's one. One plus 10 evaluates to 11, right? Well, our timestamp currently is three. Is three less than 11? Well, that evaluates to true, right? Three is less than 11. So we return false. We can't print the message. Or if you like, you can actually just get rid of 10 over here and then subtract 10 over here. It would do the same thing. It's just a different logic. We're checking if whatever the timestamp we get, minus 10 is less than whatever timestamp that we save. It's doing the same thing. It's just a little bit different logic. So just implement which one is more preferable or more easier to understand for you. I'll just leave it like this. It just works better for me. We were able to handle our cases when our timestamp did not meet our condition where it has to print after every 10 seconds. So we need to handle our other cases and this is a case when we can't actually print our message because it's after 10 seconds. So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first save the timestamp. So this is going to be this. We pass in our message. We set it equal to our timestamp that was passed in. So here we are saving the timestamp to that message. And finally, what we do is we return true. Okay, let's go back down and check. Well, as you can see for the last one, Fu was able to print because it's after 10 seconds. So one plus 10 is 11. And starting at 11 seconds, we can actually print the message again. And if you look here, Fu's timestamp was updated to 11. Now let's just go over our code one more time just to get a better understanding. Well, for the first one, what we're doing is, well, is the message ever printed? If it wasn't, we're going to save it and then we're returning true. Just know that this bracket message is saving this dot whatever our message is as a variable. So since for the first one is foo, it's saving this dot foo is equal to our timestamp, which is one. And it's doing the same thing for bar and timestamp of two. Now, if it is the case that we actually printed already, well, this is going to evaluate to false. So we hit our next if statement. Now, for this one, we have to check our timestamp. Well, if this evaluate to false, that means that we printed that message already, but we have to check our time because we can only print in the intervals of 10. So here we check, well, is the current timestamp less than whatever we printed before plus 10? If this is true, we want to return false because we can't print the message again. It has to be 10 seconds after when we print it. So for now, we saved one to our logger for the first foo, and the next one happened to be three. Well, three is less than our time, which is one plus 10, 
which evaluates to 11. Well, 3 is less than 11, right? So we return false and stop our method. Now, let's define a case when we can actually print the message. Well, if we printed the message already, this is going to evaluate to false, so it's not going to run. If our timestamp is greater than whatever we saved for our previous timestamp plus 10, this condition is going to evaluate to false, so that it's not going to run this statement. So finally, we hit last two lines. Now when this happens, we're going to first save the timestamp to our message and finally just return true. So as you can see for the last one, it was the case that our timestamp was greater than previous timestamp plus 10. So 11 is not less than 11, right? So this evaluates to false. So we hit this line. So we save our timestamp and finally just return true. If you guys find this helpful, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Thanks.